Hello, I'm Jesus Labarta and today I will be talking about how to analyze traces which include instrumentation and sample data. The objective is to highlight the importance of considering those two things as potentially complementary uh, ways to increase the precision in the uh, analysis that we get. I will be describing some uh, generics, generalities about the mechanism, then how to analyze the traces in parallel, and refer you to further presentations of more detailed analytics on this subject. Instrumentation is the mechanism of acquiring data when the control flow hits a specific uh, predefined points, typically MPI entry and exit uh, or run open MP entry and exit points, but it can be user level functions if they have been instrumented. Sampling is the mechanism of acquiring data at points which are, are random with respect to the control flow. In a sense, they can be typically it can be every certain number of milliseconds, um, but can be certain can be certain hardware control over uh, over time. Sampling is frequently used to with to online aggregate the data and produce uh, statistics, which is the the outcome of the two. Instrumentation is often used to generate traces that are then uh, visualized, but this need not be like that. There can be sampling-based systems which generate traces, and there can be and there are in, uh, there are instrumented instrumentation-based uh, systems that uh, aggregate the statistics at the end of the run and generate profiles. In our case, the VC tools are essentially, the basic mechanism is inst instrumentation, but it can be combined with uh, sampling, and this is what I will be explaining today. And the way of activating sampling is uh, with a field in the XML control file, where we can specify the period, and we can specify some variability to try and avoid correlations with the application the structure of Cassian statistics. There are other options like specifying sample influences and hardware counters overflow, but I will be focusing on this periodic analysis today. I will be showing some views and some so how to how to uh, the the sample information complements the instrumentation instrumented information. And I will refer you to uh, other sessions where we can explain how to increase the precision of the basic mechanism. To start, just recall of what is the instrumentation mechanism doing. The instrumentation is at the entry and exit of MPI calls, acquiring data of what are the parameters for those calls, as well as hardware counters that specify how many instructions or cycles have been executed bef between the previous MPI call and this one. If this time happens to be large, and it can be large, it's something that depends on the application structure, the tool has no information on what happens in between. What Sampling provides is the guarantee that at least at certain intervals, we will have some information. We can differentiate the number of instructions executed at the beginning of the interval, for example, and the number of instructions executed at the end of the interval, because the sample at the middle within, during in the interval captures that information. Having seen these basic mechanisms, I will go to the hands-on session to show with more detail the, the usage, how, how these mechanisms can be used in, in the analysis of traces. I've actually, in the directory that you will have available, the material, you have the trace that I'm going to use, you have some configurations that I'm going to use, and my first uh, command was to load the trace here and to load some of the configuration files on it. I have here the load trace loaded and I have the typical first uh, analysis we do typically is uh, MPI call profiles and their associated timelines. We also use histograms of useful duration and their associated timelines and we use histograms of uh, useful instructions and their associated timelines. I have here other view, for example, what is the IPC in, in, those, in those intervals. And I have synchronized the windows such that I can zoom into a given region of all of them. And we can look at the structure, again, the, the event, the sample, the, the acquisition, where the acquisition has been done 
the uh, in the different the different cases. The, on top, we see the MPI calls, which essentially is the instrumentation, and that's where we have the, the flags, the events that describe the points where the the information was acquired, which actually is what we said in these intervals, and this interval can be of 116 milliseconds. For example, this other interval is in of 60 something milliseconds, so they can be relatively long intervals for which we have not in, in information. We know how long they are. We have these views that say how many instructions have been done in that interval or how much IPC has been on average, for example, here 0.94, how much average uh, IPC has been achieved in that interval. But this is what you have in a trace which only has instrumentation. But in reality, this trace has sampling. And let me zoom to see it a little bit more in detail. This has additional sampling. And, and what we said is sampling is a mechanism to get additional information in the regions that otherwise would be uh, too long intervals without in detailed internal microscopic evolution. Here we have, if we look at where are the, the events, the instrumented events, they are sometimes close. And when they are close, the information, the useful duration information or the useful instructions or the useful IPC is, is for, for regions of relatively fine granularity, so it's relatively fine grain, but in these other regions it is very, very coarse grain, uh, an aggregate, an, est, an average over the whole interval. But in reality our trace had internally samples every certain milliseconds, even during the regions where there is no MPI activity. So we are going to see... Sorry, we are going to see how this, this information can be used to produce views like, mm, let me see if I find it, the IPC. The useful IPC is the standard view, the IPC that we use for the same view that we use for only instrumentation. We can use it on data which contains both things. And the same view will give us now information between every single pair of uh, hardware counters counter reads, which can be in fine grain regions with fine grain MPI, uh, would be between MPI entries and exit. In coarse grain regions of computation, would be between samples. And this gives us a lot of insight, a lot of detail about the internals in these large, large regions. A 0.93, which might look a good, you, you choose, you consider whether it's good or not that good. It, it, uh, it might be good, in reality, internally has phases which is very good, phases which is not that good. So this is a useful insight. Uh, it's not only for hardware counters like instructions and cycles, but it can also be for other things like, uh, um, like cash misses, cash miss ratios, for example, and you can start doing analysis of correlating and saying, okay, I have good IPC here because I have few cash misses per thousand instructions or or an acceptable number and here I have more and you can start arguing both information for the for the application developer which regions might be worthwhile to to improve if possible if algorithmically possible because if the algorithm is very 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 memory bandwidth limited that, that's what we have to live with maybe in those points it might be interesting to give the recommendations to the to the architects okay so, but you can do the analysis. I think the, the and this is where I wanted, where I wanted to go. I don't want to dig down more into that direction. And uh, where I, the direction I want to go now is in the direction of, of what pe typically people does with the sample, which is how many samples fell into this routine. What is the percentage from that derive the estimate of a statistical profile of how much time was spent into that routine. So it's a little bit this kind of profile. Here I have. On the horizontal dimension, there is one column for every routine in the system, in, in the program, and the statistic, the color represents uh, the percentage of the total number of samples. And by the way, there is a relatively fat profile. Well, there are some routines here that have a little bit more than the others, but the ones that have more is only 8%, okay? So it's, it's a very flat profile. We could even, like uh, what every profiler does, which is kind of, order those columns by the by the routine so we have the, here the names of the routines you see at the bottom of the of this window the name of the routines and the percentage they take in the total in the total execution other things that you typically do not have in sample prof, uh, sample uh, systems is 
uh, you could compute the statistic B, not only the percentage of time that is represent, but you compute other statistics. For example, what is the average of the, uh, I don't know, L2 cash misses per thousand instructions. And this will tell us for every routine what's the average value of that, uh, of that metric. We'll see that there are some routines that have a higher average number of cache misses per thousand instructions and other routines with lighter color have less cache misses per thousand instructions. You can uh, do the analysis with this information, which if you wish can also be saved, uh, can be saved to a text file to a CSV and can be used for, for later for all your further analysis. This view, which is a profile, is actually built on, uh, so this is a table, which is actually built on a view, on a timeline, which is something like this. Here you see, so let me, let me make sure that they are on the same, on the same time scale. And it's actually, you see, the, it's, you have the actual events, it's the program counter that you sampled, and we have to assign a color to the interval between one sample and the other. And what we do is, when we hit a sample, we assign its color to the interval till the next, till the next sample. What we see, what we see here, is that what it looks like there are several samples that fall into the same routine, and uh, we see the sequence of this routine is then followed by this other one. One can see the time space behavior of routines. In regions where it gets a little bit mixed is essentially because the granularity of the actual program is below, significantly below the sampling frequency and then it's, it's relatively random what you capture. Nevertheless, you can still do these profiles and in the same way that you, that you can do the profiles as we saw for, for functions, you can do it for, uh, for lines of source code. And, uh, and the configuration file is in the is is provided there. What I would like to what I would like to show is another configuration file which digs a little bit into the discuss a little bit the nature of sampling. Sampling is a punctual thing. It happens and we don't know whether sampling close to the beginning or close to the end of the routine. And so uh, essentially, what we have done is what we said. I said before we assign the color of that routine to the whole interval between this sample and the next one. And this is what we have seen here. We could have done the same thing assigning the color uh, to an interval, the color of the routine that we sample at the end of the interval. Okay, And this would actually essentially shift the two, not only shift the two, but change a little bit their, their shapes. So this is the inner end of sampling with the granularity that is finer grain than than the than the actual behavior time constant let's say behavior of the of the application and is inherent to any sampling uh, instrumentation based tool what uh, we will discuss in later sessions is whether by sampling at six milliseconds for example we can get a more precise distribution of these events with granularities of let's say 600 microseconds or 60 microseconds Nevertheless, given one of these uh, views, you can always, at a given point in time, compute which is the most frequent function in that interval. And this is what we show here. This is computing the most frequent function in, the, in this interval, is, is this routine, tr tr tl f something. In the next interval is this blue routine. And we see when the sequence of routines, the relative weight based on this mode, so again, it's like every statistical sampling type of type of mechanism is, is kind of an approximation. The finer the granularity you had of the sampling, the more precise it would be. Also, there might be higher overheads okay, in, the, in the execution. The last thing that I wanted to show is how this mechanism of aggregating across the vertical dimension can also be done on data which is uh, hardware counter related data. For example, something that we saw before, for example, we saw this useful IPC. And let me, and, and even if we see that it looks like they are kind of a little bit tilted the things, 
but still we can sum doing the vertical dimension to sum up all the IPCs of all the threads in the vertical dimensions and I'm going to I'm going to do that here I'm going to uh, change this is the type of the window the level of the window instead of saying I want to represent one row per thread I want, I'm going to say I want to represent a single row for the whole application and of course the individual values will be the addition of all the particular values of every thread so the value is very high I have to fit the, the color in the scale and I, I can rep I have it as a gradient of colors I can paint it as a function of time a punctual function of time and this is kind of a, an indication of what is the average I can I can put them uh, so let me they are not of the same size let me make this one of this same size to make sure copy and paste the time okay and what what I can do is I can I can I have a visual correlation now of which routines or which part of the routines I can actually if I synchronize this with let me make a new group. Let me see if it does work. Let me group five. Synchronizing group five. And I can zoom in this region. And I can see uh, which uh, functions had a better IPC, which functions had uh, a little bit worse IPC. I can also uh, paint, uh, use the, the window on top to give color to the window at the bottom. I can paint us the window at the bottom with the window at the top which I think is this one and then I see the colors in the pixels the colors of the function so I can see which parts are getting better IPC and which not in terms of the functions probably the pixels are very thin so it might be a little bit better to make it a little bit thicker and as we have said, given the granularities of the sampling compared to the actual granularities of the program, this can be, this is this aggregation, and also taking into account that the behaviors may be tilted, maybe these aggregations may give some hints, and of course they give far more insight than the original, than the original behavior of the program. Uh, copy. Oh, this one is not on the same size I can copy and paste the time and what I have is information about the behavior inside this region information about the behavior inside this region is far more precise than the original region the sampling has given us inside in regions for which we had not fine granularity but coarse granularity in those regions the sampling has provided a minimum granularity at which we will get data the topic for another day would be how can we try to improve the quality of this uh, insight by uh, properly post-processing the, the data in the trace and uh, getting higher precisions as if we had been sampling with finer grains even if we have only been sampling at relatively middle coarse grain granularities hope the presentation was useful and if so and you want to let's see in the next presentation thank you